السلام عليكم وعليكم السلام دكتور يعطيك العافية الله يعافيك دكتور نبدا ايش رايكو اللي بيجي بالحق ما في مشكله خلينا نعمل ريفيو لاخر شيء وصلنا للمحاضره الماضيه السكشن الثاني من الكلاس بنحكي عن الامتحان بنحكي عن الكويز الكويز القادم خلوه للسكشن الثاني ان شاء الله بلكي كان عدد الحضور اكبر شوي طيب المحاضره الماضيه احنا لازمنا بنحكي باللامينار فلو وحكينا عن الفيلوسيتي بروفايل اخر سلايد كان طرقنا له وقلنا في حاله اللامينار فلو الفيلوسيتي بروفايل هو عباره عن بارابولا which means انه the velocity is proportional to the Square of the radius. And we also develop this relationship here. This one. Which shows the relationship between the velocity and the radius. Or, or the radial direction. Radius is constant or not. Tamam. So what do we have here? This is another relationship between the velocity of the fluid inside a pipe, circular pipe, of course, with radius or not. Okay. We use this this term, the whole V max. Then keep this in mind for a laminar flow inside the pipe, the relationship between velocity and radial direction is parabolic, is parabolic. We also looked at this chart, which shows both the velocity and the shear stress, because the shear stress relation was developed here. This is the shear stress, which was the dynamic viscosity law. We also developed it here. So this shows the relationship between the radial direction and the shear stress. So as we said, the velocity is, uh, is dependent on R square. The shear stress is inversely dependent on the R value. What do we mean by R value? R value is the distance from the center here towards the mirror, draw a line. Should probably be better. So this is R starting from the center and going up to the other direction or in this direction this way okay so this is r so we should notice that the relationship between the velocity and location r is parabolic squared i mean and between the shear stress and the location is reverse relationship okay the direction also is different here we have uh, uh, the, the direction of the velocity of course here the direction of the shear stress is again velocity so it's opposite to velocity as we said the friction is always a negative force Okay, another concept is the fully developed flow. What do we mean by fully developed flow? Now the flow is dependent on the geometry of the system. If we look here at this pipe, we have a larger opening here and a smaller opening here. Okay. Now once the flow comes 
in from the larger diameter to the smaller diameter. We can notice that the velocity profile is not square. If you take a look here, very close to the to the contraction, we'll see that the velocity profile in this region is not developed. It is like constant value. It start develop to develop as it goes downward the pipe until we reach a point where the velocity becomes fully developed. We call this fully developed because the profile is is parabolic. Now here in this region, this is not fully developed flow. Now the problem with the, uh, the non fully developed flow is that we are here talking about the non-uniform flow. As we mentioned in chapter one, you still remember in chapter one, we said there is, there is, uh, there are situations where the flow is dependent on the location. So it's not dependent on the time. It does not vary with time. It varies with the location. And this is called the non-uniform flow. So this one and this one are non-uniform flow because Again, the velocity profile is dependent on the location from the entrance. Now, how do we know if we reach the fully developed flow or not? Because uh, a non-uniform flow is, is, of course, as we mentioned, is very difficult to handle mathematically. We need to go this distance, LE. Now, LE is normally, as said here, in this uh, slide, it says LE should be between 20 and 30 times the diameter, okay? So LE, we should go at least 20 times the diameter in order to get the fully developed flow, okay? So we start here at this point and beyond, beyond this point. Before this point, we have non-uniform flow and it's very difficult to deal with that, okay? So this is what, what uh, he's saying here, mathematically, dv by dx is equal to zero. So there is no development uh, or variation, I'm sorry, with, of velocity with the location x. Notice here, we are looking at x here, not r. dv by dx is equal to zero, which means, in, uh, which means that the velocity here is independent of the location x. Of course, x is the axial location in the direction of LE. Okay. Is, is that okay? Sorry. Let's move now to, of course, this is the only thing you need to do to know about the fully developed flow. After any contraction or expansion, or valve or any other type of fittings, there will be a region where non-uniform flow will be developed. Now to avoid this region, we should go beyond the entrance or the, the, the change in, in, in uh, the type of fitting like valve, at least 20 times the diameter of the pipe. So we guarantee that at this re region we have a uh, steady state flow or non steady state flow, but we don't have any non uniform flow. Of course, as I said, we will not deal with non uniform flow in this course, at least in this course, because it's introductory. We have a very useful relationship between the flow rate, the maximum velocity, and the average velocity. By the way, we here uh, describe the fluid velocity. We don't see the fluid speed. What is the difference between speed and velocity? Do you have any idea what is the difference between velocity and speed? And we, why we're, we're mentioning velocity, not speed? Doctor, velocity, it's possible to the speed. 
اما السبيد يعني بشكل عام كله okay. السرعه بشكل عام اوكي كلوز انف كلوز انف ذا فيلوسيتي از يوجوالي فيكتور سو ات اكسبريسز بوث ذا دايركشن اند ذا ماجنيتيود اوف ذا فيلوسيتي اوكي سو اتس مور اكوريت تو سي فيلوسيتي because we are looking at both the direction and the magnitude of the speed see so yeah this this is why we're looking here at we're mentioning here average velocity maximum velocity not speed now as far as the volumetric flow rate you know the volumetric flow rate is is a scalar magnitude it doesn't have uh, any direction it's, it's just it's just q Uh, now its direction if you're looking at its direction will follow the direction of the velocity so again this uh, relationship which is called hagen boiseli do describes the relationship or i mean both the velocity average velocity maximum velocity and the flow rate for a laminar flow notice that we're looking here at the laminar flow We are still, all this discussion is based on laminar flow, okay? So these equations cannot be applied to turbulent or transitional flow. So the, uh, what we're doing here is we're uh, integrating the velocity, which we said is a function of R, the radial location. Uh, with respect to A, of course, the A is the, uh, the surface area of the flow. If you look at the flow here, this is half sphere. Uh, sorry, this one is semi sphere. We call it hemi sphere or semi sphere or semi sphere. Lay a noscura. Amen. We're looking at the flow in three dimension, which is uh, which is an area, okay, surface area of the flow. So the flow develops in in a surface. So. Oh, Doing the integration, of course, we, we need the integration here because the velocity is not constant with R. You see here, and this is the equation we developed here. We said the velocity is not constant with R. The velocity is variable with R. So we can simply multiply the area by the velocity we need to develop a, uh, an integration. So, okay. So we need the integration because the velocity is function of R. So doing the integration, of course, we just simply uh, multiply by this area element. We'll get this relationship, which gives the flow rate for uh, a fluid moving in a circular pipe under laminar flow. Now, laminar flow, as we said, according to Bernoulli, to uh, Reynolds number, which is which says that if the Reynolds number is below 2100, this means we have laminar flow. So this applies to laminar flow. Now, there is also a relationship we mentioned in chapter three between the flow rate and the velocity. And once we get into this relationship, we are looking here at the average velocity, V average, which is equal to flow rate divided by area. Now I'm, I'm uh, talking here about the total area, which is by R naught square. So applying to this, we get average velocity for laminar flow and by. Okay. However, the maximum velocity is equal to this magnitude. Where did we get this from? Well, this, this is based, the average velocity is based on Q over A, but the maximum velocity is again from this relationship here, which, which represents this magnitude that we have derived or talked about last time. Okay, so this is the maximum velocity. And this is the maximum velocity. This is the average velocity. Now, if we take the relationship between maximum and average velocity, we will notice that average velocity is equal to maximum velocity divided by two. Or let's say average velocity is half maximum velocity. Now again, this is for a specific condition where we have laminar flow, circular 
pipe. Okay. If the pipe section changes, this will no hold, will not hold anymore. If the flow is no longer laminar, this relationship again will not hold. Now, which is more important, the average velocity or the maximum velocity in, in the fluid? Which one is more important, average velocity or maximum velocity? I mean, in our discussion or in our analysis, problem solving and st this stuff, what do we deal with? Do we deal with the average velocity or maximum velocity? Mm, average velocity? Yes, an average velocity because it's velocity. related directly to flow. Okay. We normally deal with the flow. We don't deal with the velocities because the flow, as we said, uh, will be the same uh, from one section to another. If we if the diameter changes, the flow will be the same. You know, the flow is is a velocity multiplied by the area. So if the area becomes smaller the velocity will increase, so the total flow rate will be the same. That's why we deal usually with the flow rate rather than the velocity. Now, if we need to look for example to check if the flow is laminar or turbulent, of course at this time we will need to find the velocity which will be the average velocity. Uh, of course we can do that, the Reynolds number, using the flow rate. Uh, we just uh, substitute for q over a instead of velocity in the equation so we usually use the average velocity if we need the velocity or more more uh, commonly we use the flow rate the flow rate is more common okay now we very seldom need the maximum velocity sometimes we need it but very uh, few times we'll encounter a situation where we need the maximum velocity. Again, the maximum velocity is not, is, it cannot be estimated simply by dividing flow rate over area. This is the average velocity. And the, uh, the relationship between average and maximum velocity is uh, unique and variable between different situations where, of course, uh, as we said, depends on the geometry and depends on the type of the flow or the velocity of flow basically okay so we'll we'll uh, get to the point the important point here is how to get the frictional losses and as said here in laminar flow only in laminar flow only again we're still in the laminar flow we'll again revisit this section we discussed earlier which is basically a pipe and we'll take a section in the pipe from point one to point two now we have a flow from left to right, as we said. Uh, again, the radial direction, this, this is the radial direction from the center. Uh, the distance or the section we took has a length, an axial length of delta x, of course, and the diameter r naught. Now we'll take now, not the force balance, we'll now take the Bernoulli equation between point one and two. Now this is the same as the Bernoulli equation we discussed in chapter five, but as we mentioned again, we here are looking at the friction. The friction is no longer a negligible term. It is a significant term, and we need to find a formula for a friction in this case. So if we take point one and point two and apply Bernoulli equation, as you remember, B2 minus B1 over rho G plus B2 square minus B1 square over 2G plus delta z is equal to minus f over g. Of course, we have a term plus w over mg, but that term is no longer, is, is not important here because we don't have any work added to the system. So we already neglected it. Okay. So if we look at uh, point one and point two, of course, point one and point two have different pressure pressures. P1 and B2, and that's why we have a flow. As we mentioned in the pressure drop experiment, uh, we said that the pressure should be higher at point two, two, 1 compared to point 2 so that we have a flow because the pressure is the driving force for the flow. 
in any fluid system. We need a partial difference or a concentration difference in the case of gases, of course. Now, so P2 and P1 are non-negligible. We'll keep them. Now, V2 and V1 should be the same because we have the same cross-sectional area, like we said here. You, you can observe here. This section and this section have the same sectional uh, uh, cross-sectional area. So this can be neglected. This can be neglected. So we'll, we'll, uh, we'll cancel this term. Okay, then we have, of course, Z1 and Z2, as you can observe also, the, the vibe is horizontal, so Z1 minus Z2 is also negligible, or I mean the difference is negligible, I'm not saying the absolute value. So we are left with two terms, the pressure drop, which is equal to the friction, to the friction. Of course, uh, as you can observe here, because V2 minus V1 is negative, P2 minus V1 is negative, we have the negative here, okay? So the, the friction will be the pressure drop or proportional to the pressure drop. So, so now delta V over rho G is equal to minus F over G. Okay, if we, um, if we reorganize the terms here, P1 P minus P2 will be equal to F times rho, or F is equal to P1 minus P2 over rho. Okay, so now, as you can observe, we have a relationship that we can use to estimate the frictional pressure drop in a horizontal uh, constant section laminar flow pipe. Of course, this relationship will be also valid for turbulent. So, yeah, I mean, in this form, F is equal to P1 minus P2 over rho will, will be also applicable if we have turbulent flow. But again, the problem here is P1 minus P2 is not a property of the system. What do I mean by property of the system? We usually don't measure P1 and P2. We need another term, term to use instead of P1 and P2, which is easier to measure, such as, for example, Q, such as Q or velocity, because it's, it's much easier to measure Q or velocity rather than measuring delta V. So we'll get this equation here. Now, there is another equation which we developed in the previous section, uh, this one, Q, relationship between Q and delta V. Now, if you get this delta V here, okay, on one side, and then you get Q times uh, uh, 128 mu delta X over by D naught to the power four, you, you put this terminology here, and instead of P1 as P1, P1 minus P2, as we said, we don't need to see P1 minus P2 because those are usually difficult to measure we'll have now f which is now a function of q only and as we said measuring q is much easier than measuring p1 minus p2 okay now the other terminology delta x mu rho uh, d naught to the power four those are all constants those are all constants now delta x and d naught, you know, that those are the, 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 the axial the distance and the diameter. Then we have a mu and rho, those are the dynamic viscosity and the density, those are properties. So all these terminology here are, uh, all these terminology here, these terminologies here are constants, are, are what? Constants. Now, so we are looking here at the friction is equal to flow rate times this bunch of constants, which we can call C, for example, or K. Okay, so now here, here we have a relationship which is simple and easy to calculate the frictional losses. Now, does this formula applies to turbulent flow? Of course not, 
because we have this relationship here. This relationship is only applicable to laminar flow. Okay, so this equation will be useful to estimate the friction for any laminar flow uh, cross section where we have, of course, a pipe flow. Another equation which could be also useful if we are required to estimate shear stress or if we have the shear stress and we need to estimate the uh, friction from that, we can also apply, this is the same equa uh, equation we developed earlier. So we applied for uh, P1 minus P2 here, we put it minus four by delta X. Uh, shear stress at the wall, TW over D, which is the maximum maximum shear stress as we discussed. So F is now equal to minus 4 delta X V T W over rho V D. Notice that we have here, we have a minus. The minus is, is uh, also uh, related to the direction which is opposite to the flow. This means the direction of the sh shear force, the frictional force is opposite to the flow. Okay, so here we have now a relationship which gives the friction based on the flow rate or shear stress of the wall, but again this is applicable for this situation where we have horizontal horizontal um, pipe with uh, constant diameter and laminar flow. Okay, let's take this example quickly. We have a polymer, a polymer, of course, this is a polymer solution, I mean a melted polymer uh, and plastic mass hole with a density uh, of 0.8 gram per centimeter cube. Okay. Now this is equivalent, by the way, to 800 kilogram per meter cube, and a viscosity mu equal to 230 centipoise. Centipoise. Now this is a, another unit of viscosity, the centipoise. Centipoise. Uh, one unit actually of the viscosity, which is called the centipoise. You can find it in in uh, different examples and you can convert it to Pascal second if you want. Flows at a rate of Q equal to 1560 centimeter Q per second. Now this is the flow rate Q. In a horizontal vibe of diameter 10 centimeter. Okay, so we have a horizontal vibe with 10 centimeter diameter. Now he's asking for the mean or average velocity. Now V average is equal to Q over A directly, okay. Now, uh, here you don't need to actually convert the units because you will have everything in a gram and centimeter cube. Uh, the, the second thing, the Reynolds number is the flow laminar. Of course, the Reynolds number again is rho V, V, V D over mu. We have the V, which is the V average here, V D over mu. And uh, he's asking also for the maximum velocity. Notice here that. Uh, we should have a laminar flow in order to be able to get the maximum velocity. Now, if this flow is not laminar, I mean turbulent or transition, then you can't actually use this formula here to calculate the maximum velocity, okay? Pressure drop uh, per unit length, P1 minus P2 is equal to of course, this P1 minus P2 if you are mod square over 8 mu delta X is equal to V average or Q over A. Then you can get the pressure drop from this equation. He's asking also for the wall shear stress. We use this formula directly from the slide. And finally, he's asking for the frictional dissipation or frictional loss for 100 centimeter of the pipe. Notice here he's, he's uh, specifying the length delta X. So the delta X we'll use here is 100 centimeter. And we'll use this equation because of course we calculated TW in section E. So this is a plug and check kind of problem, uh, direct uh, 
compensation of numbers and you will have the results. Okay, we'll get the, back to this example later. Okay, now let's, uh, if you don't have any question about, we're, we're now done with the laminar flow, which is normally the simple, uh, you know, part of the fluid friction. As we said, in, in laminar flow, we can use this. This is the most important equation here, this one. This one. This equation is the most important equation, which can be used to estimate the frictional pressure drop or the friction for laminar flow in, in pipes, of course. Okay. So this is the most important again. Now, uh, if you don't have any, uh, of course, we'll solve this problem based on this, but we'll, we'll talk a little bit about the turbulent flow, which is uh, the more common case. I mean, if you look at fluid flow problems, you will observe that more than 70% of the problems we'll face or we'll have are basically uh, turbulent flow. Of course, we mean here by turbulent flow, both uh, turbulent and transitional flow, because we mentioned earlier that we'll deal, we will deal with the transitional flow mathematically the same way we deal with, uh, with, the friction, with the turbulent flow. Of course, this is an approximation. It's not, it is not actually, uh, 100% accurate, but let's say we, we would be on the safe side if we consider a transition uh, flow as turbulent flow. Okay, so let's look at, first of all, let's look at the velocity profile with time. And notice for a turbulent flow that the velocity varies significantly and randomly. You see, so we have this random variation of velocity with time, of course. And there is no way we can look at the velocity instantaneously, which is U of T. That's why we usually take something called the average velocity, which is a time average or mean value of velocity. We usually plot the velocity with time, then we take an average. This line you see here represents an average value of velocity. Because we still need to have a value of velocity in order to estimate the Reynolds number and the friction and the other parameters which are involved in fluid friction. So how to deal with that? Are we going to take every point which is variable here with time? Of course, this is impossible. What we do is we take an average value. So we, we will be looking from now on at the average velocity what do we mean by the average velocity? This is the average velocity, which is a velocity between, or I mean the average of multiple velocities. Okay. Now, as far as the velocity profile, you will observe also that the velocity profile in the case of turbulent flow is quite different from laminar flow. This is an laminar flow. We said it. this is a parabola, so it's squared per beer. Now for turbulent flow, it's closer to what we call in fluid flow, we call this plug flow, plug flow. This is closer to plug flow because the variation of velocity from the center uh, to the periphery, periphery of the pipe is much smaller than the case of laminar flow. We call this Blood flow or something close to blood. It is not exactly blood flow. It's very close to a blood flow. Now, if you look at the mathematical relationship between the center velocity VC and the average velocity, you will observe that the relationship is uh, kind of uh, one over n. So this is R, which is the radial location. R capital is the radius of the pipe, and it is raised to the power one over n. That's why you see here, what you see here is a more of a flatter type of, this is peak, you see this is called peak. 
so this is sharper than this one. This is flatter because N here is approximately seven. Of course, this is an approximation because uh, the turbulent flow, as we said, is, is not, it cannot be uh, explained or uh, described exactly as laminar flow. So one over N, one over seven. So this is the relationship between average velocity and center line velocity which is supposed here to be the maximum velocity, but again, we have multiple maximum velocities here because we are looking at uh, more of a plug de flow in the case of turbulent flow. Okay, we'll uh, stop here. We'll stop here and uh, the next section, as we said, we'll discuss the exam and the quiz. So I'll get back to you. It's uh, in two minutes, okay. Uh